everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Check it out. We have the creator, producer, and writer of Doc McStuffins and Vampirina, Woo. Chris Nee. Let's get buzzed. Yes. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Our guest is the best friend children's television could ever have. She is the Peabody and Emmy Award winning creator, producer, and writer of Doc McStuffins and Vampirina on Disney Junior. She is flat out awesome, and we are so <laughs> excited to get buzzed with the super talented Chris Nee. Yeah! Yay! Let's give Chris a big hand! She sounds awesome. Thanks for being here! <laughs> Thank you for so having me. I'm so excited. You. So good to see you again, Chris. You too. I love your glasses. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. I had to, uh, I had to finally, like, I'm in my late 40s and it was like, it's time. I'd hit the point where I always had glasses down on the end of my mm -hmm. nose because yeah. I'm always looking mm -hmm. at a computer and I was like, just accept it for yep. God's sakes. Yep. Go with the full on. I'm right fighting it. Well, right if I'm now. not wearing like contacts, it. I've worn glasses since I was five. See, yeah, see, so. I never did, so it was a real adjustment oh, to finally okay. put them on. But I have to say, I, I sort of love it. I think mm -hmm. it works for because you just yeah. need it basically for reading, and then or a little for distance, or like I mean, at this point, a plate of food is is not <laughs> in focus. Yeah, you know, and that was actually and I, <laughs> That's I have to, to happen to oh, me. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, you, you know, know so you're eating it's something, you're like, now, what the hell is this? Exactly. And now as a writer, it's like so these are like three points. Progressives right. and the whole thing. Yeah, they're and, fancy. Um, they're fancy. They're well, fancy. They're working but, for you. Yeah. And my food looks good, which is now really all Now there's no more mystery meal. No. All the colors are there, no. right? It's funny. I actually know people who who have this and are like so into not wearing glasses that they they're like, yeah, no, I can't see my food at all, and it doesn't oh. bother them. It drives me nuts. Yeah. It really is, I especially really, yeah. when you go from being able to see it, like you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Having, I, and then you take them off and like, wait a minute. Yeah, like, I totally think it's a different thing for people who wore glasses their whole life and totally. never yes. really know. I mean, I always had perfect vision, so yeah. it, it just kind yeah. of freaked me out yeah. as it started. To go. By the way, this was <laughs> off topic. Yeah, not exactly. Even part the of the questions here or anything exactly. like that. But hey, we, we like accessories. <laughs> Absolutely, jewelry, uh, glasses, shoes. Let's break the ice with a true or false question yeah. okay. for you, Chris. Um, true or false, the idea for Doc McStuffins came to you while you were in, in the shower. shower? It's true. What's up with that? <laughs> totally true. Well, like, I mean, isn't that the classic? I learned Happens. to take a lot of showers after that. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was in the shower, and it was one of those things where I, I had the entire idea really kind of formed, wow. set, I, and, and including the name. And as we know, names through development tend to change a million times. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. one of those things like n your first name never sticks. And I had that in the five minutes. I, I, wow. I got out of the shower, called my best friend, and I said, I either somebody has already done this idea or I will sell it. Now, selling it to making it to yep. something right. happening like what happened with that are all, all completely different things. I'm very realistic about the business. Yeah. But uh, no, I walked out and I was like, it's Doc McStuffins. It's a clinic. It's in her backyard. She has these best friends. There'll be music. So cool. They'll be like, I just saw it. I knew it. Man, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it was a good shower. I love that. Um, I love, I mean, the show celebrates diversity and inclusiveness yeah. and love and compassion and did you ha even imagine that it would have the reach no. that it's had? I mean first of all I think it's incredible hubris for anyone to think a show is going to have that kind of um, sort of zeitgeist, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. moment. You just can't. Here's what I think for anyone, and it's your first show, your second show, your tenth show. I, I think your job, and I think the only way to be realistic in this business is to, your goal should be making the best show you can make. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having great people around you. And I think sometimes, first of all, sometimes that doesn't happen, as we all know. Like, good people make bad shows. Sometimes it just doesn't coalesce in the way yep. you want. Um, and, and often, good shows just don't hit whatever the sweet spot, don't get the push, don't get the, and then you have to move on to the next show. So for me, I was just trying to make a show that I knew, I thought every ounce of it was was what I had hoped for, that yeah. I had pushed mm -hmm. for the best. As we started to see the episode at the end, I was like, I'm, I, I knew that I was 
beyond proud. Like there, there weren't those things that I was like, nah, I really wish we had done yeah. this. I really, yeah. Yeah. but that still doesn't mean. And you know, in the very beginning, it, it was sort of the underdog show at Disney. I mean, we we hadn't qualified to be a TVA. We sort of like we were sort of the outside mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. and slowly they really sort of started to see what we had and brought us in and gave us the big push. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't a given at the beginning. Honestly, mm -hmm. did yeah. you put together your team, or yeah, were for you the given? Uh, no, people? for the most part, um, my as far as a studio, we worked Brown Bag Studios in Dublin, Ireland. Right. Um, we had originally gone out because I well, we weren't in TVA. We'd originally gone out to um, sort of some South Korean studios. Uh, to save money for the pilot, and um, and I did remind everyone that I had an Irish passport, and that mm -hmm. was when we went to Ireland, where the animation is just extraordinary, yeah. and that's been one of the greatest combinations and uh, partnerships of my life is working with Brown Bag and spending time there, uh, and the writing team is 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 my baby, and of course. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm involved, I, I do the final casting for everything, mm -hmm. um, and I'm incredibly work, lucky to work with Maria Estrada, yeah. who yeah. is just the best. Dynamic. She's just yeah. so good at her job, it's mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. um, and so we somehow have put together this incredible team. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've been together for a long time. Like, yeah. we, we, it's not the show until maybe the last year, partially because I split off to do Vampirina, and then it was like a lot of the, a lot of like my writing staff came with me. Mm -hmm. So that's where things, but, but for 120 episodes, we really kept a very core team. Yeah. People seem to be happy to be working on it. Hey, yeah. didn't Doc McStuffins, I, I, I thought I heard this, that didn't it do, more seasons than like any other Disney? It's the longest running Disney show except for Mickey Mouse. Right. Which is... That's pretty crazy, It's Chris. crazy. Yeah, yeah, we beat Phineas and Ferb. Um, <clears throat> and when we started into our fifth season, we tied them at the end of our fourth season. Yeah. We beat them, at, 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 which, you know, I love to say to Dan and Swampy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, those are things like at the beginning, who would have ever thought that? Right. And right. this show, like, ne first of all, no one thinks that. And second yeah. of all, not, I just... No, I had no idea we would be yeah. that show. Well, one of the coolest things, man, because obviously we've been like ODing on Doc McStuffins <laughs> before we got to sit down with you. And I got to say, first of all, it's such an original concept of creating a show. And I know that you have a little story about even why you wanted to create something like that, which we'll get into. But it, the concept is so original. And then when you watch it come to life, yeah. mm -hmm. it goes beyond where you think it would it would go. Yeah. And it teaches you so many things. Yeah. Well, I think hopefully it teaches you things. It also, we're, I mean, I'm, I want it to be a, a solid comedy and a real, yeah. I'm not writing for kids. This is always my mm -hmm. thing is that, um, you know, a lot of kids writers, they, they, the proper answer is, who are you writing for? I'm writing for kids, I'm writing yeah, for yeah. kids. It's like, I'm writing for myself. Mm -hmm. Like totally I'm writing for myself. I am, I am writing for my own pain in my childhood, my memories from my childhood. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make myself laugh. I'm, I'm working out my own shit basically, yeah. and that's, and I think that's why it feels really real. Yeah. And and I'm I'm holding myself to the same standard, and I'm holding my writers to the same standard yeah. of like, I think of it as you know there is those comedians who 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 talk about that part of their craft and part of what they love doing is not working blue. That that's yeah. a challenge right. to them that they right. find really interesting, mm -hmm. and I find myself. Uh, I look at this and I think I want to tell as full a story with a beginning, middle, and end and all the structure. I want to tell jokes that are sophisticated and really specific to the characters. And I'm and my challenge is I have to do it without uh, upsetting S and P at Disney. Like and, right, right. and but yeah. and I find that to be a joy versus I don't see the box of it. I see yeah. the opportunity of mm -hmm. having my hands behind my back Be and now creative. what can I do? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a puzzle. yeah. 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 Exactly. I have four sisters. There's five girls. We had, Woo! right? Stife animals, you know, the button in the yes, ear. We I had remember. this massive collection between yep. five girls, right? Yep. So we, I was doing voiceover before I even knew what it was because every character had oh, a yeah. name yeah. and a voice and a storyline. And yeah. now when, I, when Chuck first met my family, I'm being called these names. He's like, who are they talking to? I'm like, they're talking to me. We don't even call each other our right, real names. Right, right, right. And so when Doc came on, I was like, 
<laughs> right. We were like, this is so It's like a amazing. flashback into your childhood. Totally. And that's my thing is, is you know, what we all talk about with the show now is there's the medical stuff. It'll be remembered for the yeah. medical side of things. Right. It'll be remembered for Doc being black. Those yeah. are the things that, that, that sort of have become what people think about when they think about the show. But that's not why the show is successful. Mm. The show is successful because it is every kid's wish fulfillment to talk to their toys and have them talk back. Totally. Yes. And this is what I always say to people. You cannot lead with the issues. Right, you have to tap into something that is pure emotion for a kid and that feels mm -hmm. real and feels, you have to find a story that works, then you can layer on all this stuff that like that you might want to be adding to yeah. that or just making sure that you're making the world a better place and yeah. not, but, but yeah. I, it's, I, you know, for a long time I was like, I don't even know if Disney knows that why it works. It works because we all remember lying in bed at night with that one stuffed animal and telling it why your parents were so wrong to mm -hmm. put you in bed without your, you know, and yeah. that, and just that, that that's the, that that's your deepest comfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is that moment where those guys talk back. Yeah. And, and, and that to me is the secret sauce of the show and then allowed me to do all these things because I do am someone who's socially progressive and want I want you know I I, I do I want to make the world a better place um, yes and, and you that's, are I mean, well you, you already you have clearly, right? so that's good well and you clearly have a, a main line to your innocence and your sense yes. of childlike and play yeah. and, how do you keep I, yeah. that in a time in a world when it's always sort of trying to rob you of yeah, that? Yeah, Chris. Oh boy, I don't. I, I, I don't know. Like on my day to day self. Thought? Yeah, exactly. In my yeah. day to day self, I don't think I. I don't think I am that person. In fact, I think, <laughs> I think that if, I think in meeting me, I think the funny thing is to realize that I'm the person who writes all this sweetness and that I write shows <laughs> where characters really do say I love you to each other all the time and it feels earned and it feels all of that stuff, because I don't necessarily come off as that person. But I do think I, I have some facility to remember what it felt like to be a kid. And yeah. I think the best kids writers, um, b both in print, it's, you know, the Maurice Sendak's mm -hmm. and, you know, all of them. They just, they're, 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 again, I think the best people are writing about their own stuff. And mm -hmm. they just yep. have some ability to remember. I mean, uh, not specific moments, but I remember what it was like to be afraid in a thunderstorm and mm -hmm. and to sleep at home in in the being afraid of the dark. I was afraid of the dark for a really really long time, like longer than I should have been. I went to summer camp <laughs> uh, for the first time, still with the nightlight, which was mm. by the way horrifying. I remember that too. All those yep. feelings yep. are very real for me, yeah. and so I'm always trying to write things that feel as real as that for me even if it's a stuffed animal, mm -hmm. who's the one who's delivering it. Yeah, and you know, you know it's someone's gonna go, oh, I felt that too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's one of my favorite uh, early episodes of Doc, which was the first time that we brought Rob Paulson in, who then became essentially one of the main, you know, like the second tier main characters mm -hmm. was Sir Kirby. Um, but he was this gallant knight who came in, who <laughs> turned out to be, uh, in the first episode we meet him, he's, he's uh, he, he realizes that he's never taken a bath and he's just disgusting and he needs yeah. to get washed. But the second episode we brought him in for, um, it was all about him being afraid of the dark. Oh, and yeah. it was so beautifully played as this yeah. very yeah. proud character who just was a complete wuss when, yeah. when, when the lights got turned off. When you, when you first started casting the show, yeah. um, did, were you aware of the Jess Harnells and the Lauras and the Robs? I mean, were you aware how great these guys were? I was certainly, I had written for, um, you know, there's always that funny thing where writers in our business are often kept very far from the actors. Yeah. And um, I think it's a terrible thing for several reasons. One, we're all part of the same community, but more than anything, I think writers learn so much from being in the records. And it tends to, in a lot of studios, a lot of shows, really just be the, the showrunner and sometimes just the director and the writing staff is not sort of mm -hmm. welcomed in. I work very hard to bring my staff in. Yeah. I, I, I ask them to come in regularly because I think two things happen. Number one, they really get to know the actors and yeah. you start to learn on a long time show, you know, series like these, you start to learn who can handle what, um, mm -hmm. uh, what, what makes someone stumble. You really learn their strengths. I also think you just learn things about your own writing. Like I, I'm very uh, attuned and for me, it was probably 10 or 15 years ago being in Boots and hearing certain things that looked right on the page. Like, I love to do the double pump, like, um, 
uh, you know, uh, he always eats the cookies, he always eats the cookies! And it's amazing how many people can't get that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so I stopped writing it unless I could, unless I was an actor I knew could, could, could really do it. it. Do right? the pump, you, you, yeah, yeah. you do the weird double pump. Um, <laughs> the double pump! <laughs> the double pump, now everyone's gonna be like, I am gonna master the yeah, double pump. I'm the master. Yeah. And then there's even the triple pump. Uh, yeah, really, I know, which that's is a whole, a very other, elusive is a whole other thing. Yes. Um, I just gave you the line that we had to cut from an episode <laughs> where it turns out that Santa doesn't come and this little kid is like trying to prove it and he's like, he always eats the cookies. He always eats the cookies! And they yeah. didn't get it right, and I was like, just use the oh, one. Just use the cookie. But yeah. there's my version of it in my head. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, uh, and I was lucky enough to work on a show, I've, I've worked on a couple of shows that were very good about trying to train up the next generation and make sure that you weren't isolated in a room and that you were writing for the larger show versus mm -hmm. your script, so your paper yep. script. You're writing the episode, not the script. Right. Um, and I worked on a show called uh, American Dragon, Jake Long, which was um, a Disney TVA show. Uh, and it, you know, John DiMaggio was the, was a food dog who I wrote a page of him um, basically gagging uh, through a monologue for like a page and a half, like genius. Um, D. Bradley Baker was always the was the monsters and everything. Like, and, yes. and that was a place where I I was always the person sitting in the back. Like D ne did not remember me. Like, and I even though I was there probably every <coughs> third record. Yeah. Right. Um, we didn't really speak, but they were like every time it's your episode, you come and you sit and you watch. Mm -hmm. And that is such a valuable use of yeah. all of your time. Yeah. And it's just about saying, I'm gonna invest in training you. Um, so I was, I was certainly aware of, a, of, of many of those people. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to say the story of the the pilot. So, so you know, when it came yeah, when, yeah. when it came down to the audition time, yep. were you like, oh man, I'd really love to hear so and so as mm -hmm. that character? No, I think at that point, first of all, I, 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 I it was the first show that I was running. Um, and and Disney was not yet fully in the. Tr I mean, I certainly had a, a certain amount of control, yeah. mm -hmm. but I was stepping back. Sue Blue actually cast the original pilot, and then Maria Estrada took over after that. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, the hard thing was to find a doc who could carry uh, the show. That mm -hmm. was that was a thing. And and. Um, uh, Kiara Muhammad was uh, amazing. She was just so smart in her reads, so she was a real gift to find. Obviously, like Lara Jill, yes. um, you know, I had a crush on her when I was a kid, so there you go. Um, she so, I mean, does she know that? Uh, she would be calling I, 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 I feel very, like I probably have told her that's that so at cool. some she point. She does now. Yeah. Um, Robbie uh, is, Robbie Rist, who plays Stuffy. Mm -hmm. um, and and you guys should have him on because the stories of his life. He is just one of the most talented actors I know. He can do these like arcs on the show, mm -hmm. um, and he was just is totally delightful as Stuffy. Of course, our great thing was uh, was getting was doing auditions for um, for Hallie the hippo. Yeah. And I was sitting there and I was like, I'm so sorry. Is is that Loretta Devine just auditioning to play a hippo on this mm -hmm. show? Yeah. Uh, so good. And she's one of the ones who, re that really changed the character. That yeah. was not how I imagined the character, and every, all the other characters were what I pictured right, them right. to be. Um, and the last piece was Jess came in, so Chili was not originally one of the main characters. He had a, an instrumental one little scene line thing in the, in the pilot, and, uh, you know, Sue asked, just to come in and just do a favor, basically. And he just killed it, and the design was amazing, and we were like, oh, he's coming back. Yeah. And by within three episodes, we knew he that was he in. was the main yeah. cast, yeah. and that was So fun. cool, man. So, I mean, you know, we had so many gifts on that show, and Loretta was someone who, that was the one character, I pictured her as kind of like an older, matronly yeah. grandmother, mm -hmm. um, Hallie, and, and then Loretta auditioned, and it was just this audacious audition that had nothing to do with necessarily what was on the page, and I was like, like, first of all, I'm like a Broadway, she's so sick of me saying like, I yeah. saw you on Broadway when I was a kid. <laughs> and she's like, okay girl, stop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, enough. Cause I, so she was someone I really, really yeah. idolized. But um, but she could just, I just had to be open to her completely changing the interpretation of who Hallie was. Mm -hmm. And she's just turned into one of my favorite and the strongest characters. 
Um, and I, I think any good show, and again, this is this is this has to do with like making sure that the writers and the performers are live in the same universe. Yep. Because if you're actually listening to each other, and again, it's so hard because animation is so long. Right. You know, in live action, you're writing something, and then you guys are watching that back within a couple of weeks. You might be watching a rough cut, so you yep. can mm -hmm. adjust quickly. Mm -hmm. In animation, you you may have written most of the first season before you ever see anything, and that's still a pencil. It's such a long process so you right. you as a showrunner I think successful showrunners are very aggressive about saying I want this stuff to feed off each other and I'm gonna yep. have to make it happen especially in the beginning um, but when you have performers like I mean, we just got so lucky on that show and and it's also a show you know animation companies uh, hate me <laughs> because I write <laughs> such I write big shows and yeah. Doc mm -hmm. is the biggest of the big. I mean, I, we've done uh, something like six hundred characters on that show, yeah. um, and partially because what I'm ultimately writing about is community. Like that's my. If you really look at everything I do, I'm mm -hmm. trying to write about the community. I hope. Yes. I aspire for us all to be in, mm -hmm. um, and and so that show just has. There, there. Uh, you know, every episode was a new main character, and and then people would come in like a Rob Paulson, um, like uh, 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 Lorraine and Newman, and then and then you just go, well, well that character's going to come back like seventy <laughs> yes. million yeah. times, yeah. and they yeah. start to become part of this world. Mm -hmm. um, but you, they're they're just they bring so much the actors, and you're stupid if you don't feed off of that yeah. and yeah. figure out what their strengths are, figure out what they're bringing to it and start mm -hmm. to write to yeah. it. When you're creating shows and characters within those shows, mm -hmm. are you cognizant at all, at all about, because obviously these characters become more to people. Yes. So are you really aware of the kind of role models that you're potentially creating? Totally. Whether of what to be or not to be? Yes. Y yeah, I mean, that's... Um, I write very aspirationally. I write very much like what I hope the world would be or what I hope my childhood had been. Um, and and I'm I'm very I'm very active. And I've gotten more so over the years of just being incredibly aware of how many women I have, how many men I have, what color are they, what religion are they, how many blue eyes do we have in care. I mean mm -hmm. I, I I'm I, I probably drive everyone a little bit crazy, but I just think we can do better. And and I'm a big believer in, you know, I created Doc for my son who has asthma, which is really where the, the yeah, you know, the I, impetus I of it, know, right? Yeah, I want to know about that for yeah, sure. Yeah, and I'll tell you, but, but I, <clears throat> I, it never occurred to me, uh, first of all, to make it a boy. Yeah. And people find that very strange because I was making it for my son. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? We have too many boy characters leading the pack. It just didn't right. seem, I just wasn't interested in doing that. Um, and also never occurred to me that it would take away from him loving the character if I made it a girl. And and that we found that with Doc, that because the world is so diverse and we have so many great male characters in it, uh, boys and girls come along. And, mm -hmm. and that's fantastic yeah. for yeah. us. Well, yeah. and to be able to have young boys and girls, old boys and girls, um, of all different shapes and sizes and colors, to see yeah. themselves represented on right. television is it's powerful. It's so incredibly important. And I mean, we know that, and we say that, and we've been saying that for years. Right. But it is it has been amazing watching really specific, I mean, apparently now, uh, Forbes magazine did, a, did a, a survey about a year ago, so we'd been on the air for probably three or four years at the time, and suddenly, um, for girls ages, I think it was three to 11, the number one thing they wanted to be was a doctor. Mm. And you know, there's I, I, there's probably a lot of that comes from yeah. right, comes right. from Doc, and that's like, boy, it really does make a difference. Right. Absolutely. If we if we pay attention to this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I think we have to change also who's behind um, the scenes in our industry. There's a lot of work we need to do, but in the interim, uh, everyone who's in a position of power and in a position of making shows, you you have to stop making all, all of it a tribute to your Uncle Stan. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. then inherently everything on the show will look like everyone behind the scenes, and I also think it keeps away more people coming into our business mm -hmm. who uh, you know more diverse writers because they just they like they I, I used to look at the credits and look for women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember the moment where I was like, if I were not such a bulldog of a person, I can see the moment where you just go, boy, there aren't a lot of female writers, so why would I go out there and do this? Mm -hmm. um, 
And I got very lucky. Sue Rose was one of the people that I kept seeing and on credits of shows that I loved. And she created Pepper Ann and Angela Anaconda. And I came out to L.A. and she hired for me for one of my first shows. And, um, you know, I feel a little guilty that if you look at my name, you have no idea that I'm a woman. Mm. Um, in fact, I was hired once on a, on a, on a show uh, because they needed an Asian male perspective. Chris Nee. Oh, hmm. well, there I, you go. I spent two seasons on that show because nice. once they met me, nice. there wasn't a whole lot they could do about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that's Don't true. Don't judge a book by its cover totally. or I mean, its name. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I did oh, actually. For for like, there were like three credits where I went to Christine, be, and it was only because I just was really aware that, yeah, that yeah. you yeah. would look at my name and not, not know no. that I was a woman, and I just wanted to cr encourage other women. But then I always felt like I was in trouble because ultimately Christine and my family was just like your, that was right. only what I got called when I was in trouble. And <laughs> I just, it just didn't feel like my name. And I did switch it back, but it's always right. bothered me a right. little bit. I, yeah. I wish, you know. Maybe you could put a little, a like, woman symbol behind a little woman it. Symbol. Or like, like, like dye your eye with it's the it's feminine it's Yeah, exactly. Like Chris a girl power knee. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, well, my Twitter account says, you know, not a dude. Like, I just, right. because, I get, yes. because I get that a lot. And I, even with that up there, but I was like, you know what? It's just somewhere I want to say. Like that's, yeah. I have a different perspective, and yeah. yeah. What's the correlation between your son, asthma, and yeah. then creating Doc McStuffins? Um, you know, he, he's much better now because it's been a long time. I pitched the show uh, ten years ago, but yeah. he had pretty severe asthma, and um, like any parent, you're just looking to find a way to make your kid feel better yeah. and um, I wasn't going to learn molecular science and <laughs> um, you know fix him yeah. right. that wasn't going to be me and 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 it I just had a night he had been to um, we'd had to call an ambulance and it was uh, he couldn't breathe and um, it was the uh, break this you know pill in case of emergency moment and yeah. had to take an ambulance in and we spent the night in the ER and he'd always spend more time with the doctors than most kids and um, I just had that moment where I thought like why hasn't anyone demystified this and the second I kind of had it I just went oh oh my mm -hmm. god there's this whole world um, you know at the beginning I, I do understand it but Disney was in any network would they were really nervous about doing medical stuff of course right, right. I mean, and so we be, had to earn yeah. the trust like in the beginning they didn't like we couldn't but do it we couldn't do a shot yeah. you make it pastels yeah exactly it's then it's like, all fine it's, it's all fine yeah <laughs> So did you always know that writing for animation, uh, you know, uh, was something that you wanted to do for a living? That I did love animation, but not necessarily. I, I was not one of those people who was like, it was just animation or even just kids TV. That said, I started at Sesame Street. Yeah. Um, not a bad place to start your career. Yeah. I not, yeah. yeah, exactly. I worked at Sesame Street International and, um, uh, I ended up getting like the best job in the world, and I travel around the world, um, for, you know, associate producing uh, versions of Sesame Street. I, I I worked in Mexico and I worked in Finland, and then um, I took over the back half of doing uh, the Israeli-Palestinian Sesame Street, which they were only able to do one season of. Yeah. Um, and I I shipped off to Jordan and spent time in Jordan. Um, dubbing the Muppets into Arabic. I do sing background on a few of those songs because they just didn't have enough actors. Wow. And I'd be like, so the word is Maya for water. And they'd be like, yeah. And I was like, am I saying it right? They were like, yep. And I was like, well, I can sing the back. And so, you know, it's like, Maya, Maya, that's me. And if you're over there. Um, and it was this crazy job. I was 27 years old and I, I actually had my head shaved at the time. And I remember going to everyone and being like, um, and they were just opening up Jordan to, to Westerners. And I was like, can we just talk about whether this is safe for me? And it was so PC at Pet Sesame at the time. They would be like, we do not know what you're talking about. And I was like, no, we can, like, yes, we can talk about it. Like, I'm, am I going to be safe <laughs> there? And they would be like, we just don't know what you're, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going. Uh, yeah. um, so off I went and it, I had this, uh, I was being followed by the security police the entire time that I was in uh, Jordan and everyone was so polite they didn't want to tell me until mm. like at four in the morning because we used to record at night because there was no real animation or kids industry there so right. it was like everyone had day jobs and then they would come we would record yeah um, and uh, uh, they somebody jumped on an elevator with me at four in the morning and shut the elevator off and said who do you work for and I was like I 
I Big Bird. I work for Big Bird. That's what I said. And they didn't know what Big Bird was. So it sounded like oh, I, I was talking I about my code agent, Bird. right? Like, they that is a code agent, agent, Big Bird. Totally. It sounds like a complete, like, I now I'm completely Good in a B movie. Good thing you Oscar the Grouch. Right, totally. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, I mean, that was just wow. an experience. That and must have been intense. It was totally intense. I mean, and, and I, I used to have tapes of the, um, of the, uh, Arabic Bert and Ernie, they would smoke cigarettes during in between the takes, and so you would hear them say their line, and then you would just hear <laughs> the pull on the cigarette. It's uh, it the greatest thing. Um, <laughs> and then I went to Israel and just lived in Jerusalem, and every day I would get picked up and drive the other way across um, the border and checkpoint into Ramallah, mm -hmm. and we wow. did work there doing the live action portion of the show. Man. So it's just an incredible thing, and I and I and I love to travel, and I love to be around other cultures. And um, I was about to take on more and more, and take on more of the European market. And I I just had to kind of say to myself, like, this is literally the best job in the world. And if I blink, it's going to be 20 years from now, and I'm still going to have the job, and it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. But it isn't what I always wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to be a writer. I deeply wanted, I knew that I was a writer and that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so I quit the best job in the world um, because I knew if I didn't, You'll I was, be yeah. there. yes, yeah. I'd still be there. Yeah. By the way, I'd have a great life sure. and it would have been yeah. amazing. Um, but I, I do think sometimes you really have to ask yourself and, and you have to jump off the cliff. And I jumped off the cliff. Sesame was good enough to, to help me in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a great producer who gave, who gave me a job, uh, uh, taking out the Z's and putting in Z's in the um, UK <laughs> version of Sesame Street. And we were working in a, in a donated edit bay in one of the fanciest edit bays in Manhattan. But I would start at 2 in the morning. <laughs> and we would cut the show all night long. And then I would go right during the day. Mm. Um, and I just got very lucky. Like, I, I, I immediately started getting jobs writing and kind of never looked back. I've never done anything else so cool. um, in terms of that. But then I also always had an adult side of my career. So I, I, I worked a lot in... Um, uh, in documentary TV, yeah, just like as we, yeah, as that I, is yeah, crazy. I was a producer on the first hey, season of Deadly. I mean, I sort of famously was. I was in uh, on the island of Unalaska. Um, I, you know, I was I was staying on uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and I, so I was there for like a month. I did two seasons, so I was there once uh, more during the summer, and then I was with there once in January for the, for longer periods of time. Um, and if you know Mike Rowe, it was like the two of us were on the island, um, <laughs> and we would. We, there was like the one bar that you just had the best seafood in the world. Thank yeah. God we didn't know about mercury yet yes. because we would just eat like fresh tuna out of the ocean. Oh. And every night we would sit and drink and shoot the shit and like eat amazing seafood. And then at some point I'd be like, I have to go back to my room because um, I have to write a Backyard Again's episode, right? <laughs> and so I, I actually wrote, a, I wrote the first uh, Christmas episode of Wonder Pets, the first special for the Wonder Pets while I was in that hotel room. <laughs> Uh, and it was an old like World War II barracks, but I loved that. So I love. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a total uh, extroverted introvert. Introvert, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and so I always had these two sides, and I loved the producing, and I loved being on set, and I loved traveling. And then I, and then I would have periods where I would just kind of like stay in my yeah. room and write mm -hmm. and 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 write and. Um, and having a kid too, it, it brought, I was like, all right, it's time to stay home now. Now I'm going to dedicate myself to kids TV and then, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. You know what's really cool yeah. is that you, you could totally tell that <laughs> you, like a lot of people like doing what they do, but the work part of what they do is like, oh shit, I have to do this, this and that. Yeah. And then they, but they love the outcome. You mm -hmm. love, I love the it. work. I do love yeah. the work. Like you yeah. love yeah. all yeah. of it. Yeah. Which I is do, so cool. I love all of it, yes. And mm -hmm. I'm very much, um, you know, I think the hard thing about sh be the question of being a showrunner and being an executive producer, and I always say to people, like, there are some people who are the most talented writers, yeah. and there's something inherently writerly that often is not, does not have that leadership part and mm -hmm. the organizational part, right. too. And so sometimes this thing that you try to force together, which is the right thing, which is, here's someone created a show, and now you're going to run that show, which is a huge production, 
millions of dollars, lots of, you know, hundreds of people. Yeah. Uh, that's a hard fit for some people. I'm, I'm just that rare bird where I'm actually a full producer, so I, you know, made my living and things like that. They sketch fully as a producer. I'm a natural leader, yep. um, and I'm also a pure writer. Like, I still purely love to just, I write as many episodes as I can. I know there are people who get to the point where they're like, I don't really want to write anymore, and I'm like, right. I want to write as many. Yeah, like I have more. Yeah, you know, every time it's really important, like, I'll be like, uh, you know, and I have this idea for this episode, and I really want to do it. I'm sorry, guys, I'm writing it. Like, I, that's my yeah. thing. I will hold on to the episodes I'm the most excited about until schedule absolutely says I can't, mm -hmm. but I try to write as many of them as I can. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So good. Well, that was part one with Chris Nee. We're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, we will. She is so awesome. Awesome. Beyond. Keep up with us and Chris on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a little, little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.